The more you reveal your pain, the more people may want to hurt you. Although it does not always happen, it is common for some people to take pleasure in seeing you suffer, or even contribute to it, happening or worsening. This behavior of sadism and envy, unfortunately, is present in many, and can indeed hinder your personal growth in various fields of life, be it at work, in a circle of friends, or even in the family. Therefore, learning not to show your weak point can end up becoming your strong point. Imagine yourself as a tree in the midst of a storm. The leaves may flutter and the branches may sway, but the trunk remains solid, deeply rooted in the earth. This is the portrait of silent resilience that we are going to teach. Here, we will talk about how you can be even stronger if you show that you are not easily affected by external issues, where each challenge teaches you to be like the tree. By acting as if nothing bothers you, you're not denying the storm, but choosing not to let the rain soak you and the wind knock you down. You will be learning to be the master of your own fate, firm, strong, and serene in a sea of chaos. In this video, we will talk about 18 Stoic principles of Epictetus, a great and renowned philosopher you have probably already heard of. In addition, I invite you to self-knowledge, where strength does not come from the noise of thunder, but from the silence of the light that illuminates the path. Therefore, in the next few minutes, focus on the content and not on daily distractions. Let's go. Principle number one. Listen twice as much as you speak. Have you ever thought about why nature gave us two ears, but only one mouth? According to Epictetus, there is no error or coincidence in this, but rather a clear purpose behind this reality. Not to fall in love with our voice as much as we are called to fall in love with the voice of others. It is by learning from others that we advance in life, not by repeating our own speech over and over again. So, from today, start paying more attention to what people around you say and less to what you have been upholding until now. Principle number two, always expect the worst. One of the biggest causes of anxiety and its devastating consequences is believing that unfavorable circumstances are waiting for us in the future. We fear that our children will abandon their studies, that we will be fired from work, that our spouse will confess to us that they have been having an affair with someone else and ask us for a divorce or that something else bad will happen to us, such as going bankrupt. The problem is that one day we fear one of these problems, and the next day another and another. The path of life, in addition to reserving good and happy parts for us, also reserves a handful of problems that are inevitable. Therefore, we live in permanent stress, caused by different stimuli each day, and this is where Epictetus comes into the picture, since his proposal is as drastic as it is effective. He says, think that all these things you fear so much have already happened. So what could be worse? In this way, your spirit will develop coping strategies to move forward with your head held high. We do the impossible so that we are not considered fools. But Epictetus has another view on this. According to his philosophy, one of the best things that can happen to you is to be considered such, as this is the way for you to really improve professionally and personally as well. The Stoic philosopher reminds us that overcoming is not the product of a spontaneous reaction, but rather the result of a long path of trial and error. For it is through error that we can polish what distances us from excellence. Principle number four, be aware of the dangers of fortune. This wealth that we desire brings with it a stigma from which few people can free themselves. And it's not just about the people who will emerge from nowhere to benefit from our fortune, like by pretending a friendship they don't feel for us. Money has the ability to transform people and not necessarily for the better. Once we are possessors of this highly coveted resource, we come to have something that until then we did not know we had. And it is from that moment that our spirit may begin to poison itself in the face of the loss of moral values.
Principle number five, do not cling to a single hope. Fortunately, we are beings inclined to practice diversity. That is, there is no reason to put all our hopes in a single dream, since this could be devastating if we fail in it. Therefore, Epictetus encourages use to pursue many dreams, as this will exponentially increase our chances of success. Principle number six, always remember that death is waiting at the end of the road. This is not advice that calls use to pessimism, but to be aware that death is the final destination of all our actions and especially our efforts. Once we have this in mind, perhaps we will start to evaluate to what extent it is WW, worth spending 20 years of our limited life, saving to pay for a house that, as much as it weighs on us, we will not be able to take with us wherever we go. Once death visits us, just as we carry in our bag those objects that we consider indispensable for our daily life, such as the phone, credit cards, and our toothbrush, it would greatly benefit us to carry a small notebook with these doic principles, because thanks to them, we will no longer see setbacks as misfortunes, nor life as internal time we have at our disposal but we will acquire a more realistic view of our existence and certainly make better use of our time of life. Principle number seven, true wealth lies in a contented spirit. Due to the Stoicism, Epictetus had his particular conception of happiness, and we can know it through one of his famous phrases. A wise man is one who does not fret over the things he does not have, but rejoices in those he does have. This reflection is more than a thought. It is advice to learn to stop feeling afflicted by those riches that are not yet part of our life. Because while we allow ourselves to complain and mourn for what we lack, we lose valuable minutes of happiness in which we could thank for everything we have achieved so far, which is much more than our eyes are trained to appreciate. Thus, a rich person is above all a happy person. Principle number eight. Incorporate humility into your life. If you really want to learn something, it is essential that a person learns what they believe they already know. Through this phrase, Epictetus calls us to make use of our humility, especially in the realm of learning. Going through life, boasting of the pride of knowledge distances us more and more from the authentic knowledge that arises from the conviction that we are completely ignorant about what we intend to learn. In this way, we will look at everything through the eyes of a child, which harbor as much capacity for wonder as they do a desire to learn. Principle number nine, guilt is synonymous with plague. Narrow-minded people blame others. Ordinary people blame themselves. But the wise see all guilt as foolishness. Thanks to this phrase from Epictetus, Therapists nowadays have begun to approach guilt as a feeling to be eradicated from our lives. The only way to win the competition against guilt is to refuse to play with it. The problem is that it results in an easy path, since by blaming others or ourselves, we completely absolve ourselves of the responsibility for their actions. Principle number 10. Make alliances with winning people. It's curious how, when someone sneezes next to us, we immediately move away, invaded by the fear that they will infect us. However, we are not so cautious to avoid one of the most lethal contagions we are exposed to daily. Epictetus left us a wise piece of advice about this. Surround ourselves with people who make us want to give our best, because people's behavior greatly influences our state of mind. There are people who drain our energy and ruin our day, while others leave us full of joy and vigor. Therefore, one of the smartest decisions we can make is to ally ourselves with those who bring good vibes into our lives, while we say goodbye to those who have the ability to make us regret being born. Principle number 11. Never forget that your reactions forge your destiny. We should not take our reactions lightly as they are definitely what mark our success or our failure. And Epictetus was very categorical about this. He taught us that we do not have the possibility to choose what happens, but how to manage it. 
Misfortune can fall upon any of us, but it is what we do from its arrival that will mark the difference from that moment on. For some people, a divorce means entering the world of depression and victimization. In contrast, for Epictetus, it is a golden opportunity to start on the path of self-knowledge. Remember that your life is not what happens to you, but what you do with it. Principle number 12. Always fulfill your duty. Each one of us has a role in society and in the world, and the sun does not need praise or enchantments to rise each morning, but it does every day, and that's final. Thus, just as every part of nature does its job, we must fulfill our obligations. If we are waiting for pleas or praise to do our work, we are failing both the environment to which we belong and ourselves. If we know what our task is and are aware that other people depend on it, it is our moral duty to carry it out without waiting for anyone to remind us. Principle number 13. Do not hate those who hate you. Simply ignore them. You are much bigger and completely superior to the one who criticizes, despises, and discriminates against you. Therefore, do not waste your precious time hating that person, as they do not even deserve to be present in your thoughts. We are encouraged not to fear people who harm you, as that noise represents a regrettable attempt to damage you, so ignore it and, and become immune to it. Principle number 14. Bet on simplicity. Why live in frugality if, nowadays, we have the possibility to surround ourselves with all kinds of luxuries? The answer is much simpler and more logical than you think, because wealth does not maintain itself but requires commitment and a lot of daily energy to be able to preserve this system of luxuries and wealth. In contrast, when we opt for a simple lifestyle, we stop being surrounded by the pressure of having to meet the due dates of bills, loans, and credit cards. Principle number 15. When you allow the comments and attitudes of others to bother you, you are handing over control of your life. Any person capable of making you angry becomes your master. However, that person can only make you angry when you allow yourself to be disturbed by them. Epictetus makes us understand that there are many keys within us, and some lead us to happiness, while others lead us directly to emotional ruin, and it is precisely this last key that we hand over to those who make us angry. The solution to this problem is to put up a barrier that prevents us from being affected by the attitudes of others, because, definitely, each one is the owner of what they say and also of what they decide to listen to. Principle number 16. Friendship is above wealth. True wealth is genuine friends, as they will be there to support us if one day our material fortune dissipates. Therefore, dedicate yourself to cultivating true friendships, and you will be making a very profitable long-term investment. Principle number 17. Always extract the benefit from things. Whatever happens, it is up to you to take advantage of it or not. These were the words of Epictetus. As you can see, it is not about having the option to take the good out of adversity, but that doing so is our duty. As long as there is intelligence in you, there will be the ability to realize the advantages you can take from the situation that has struck you. Imagine that one day, you arrive at work to find out. You will be fired. Instead of despairing and accusing the universe of being against you, you have the option of venturing into that enterprise you dreamt of while fulfilling your work schedule alongside people you disliked. Therefore, always try to look for the positive in a situation, as this movement added up throughout your life will certainly take you further than just lamenting. Principle number 18. Stop worrying about what is out of your control. You are the owner of your opinion, but not your reputation. You have the desire and the zeal for the search, but you cannot control the amount of goods you have or success. Therefore, worrying and getting bitter about those things we cannot control is simply making the decision to waste time. According to Epictetus, we are called to cultivate those values that we have the possibility to change, 
but it is also our responsibility to let go of what is out of our control and thus let fate take care of it. In addition to being incredibly useful for everyday life, Stoic principles are teachings that can help us navigate bad times with interest and resilience, as there is no place in their philosophy for fantasizing, but only for applying what is learned and moving forward. Please subscribe.